we're really excited today to celebrate Black History Month at Hunters Creek. Our Black History Month program is going to feature student speakers and student singers. We'll also have a keynote speaker, Reverend Joel Churchwell. And we're really excited about our special guests who will attend, members of the Hunters Creek family throughout the area who have contributed to the school in some way or another. We feel like Black History Month is a very important part of our school and our community and we're excited to recognize that today. Thank you all for coming today to our Hunters Creek Middle School Black History Month program, a celebration of diversity. First up, I would like to introduce Amand Everett to give our welcome note. Good afternoon. My name is Amon Everett. Welcome to the 2016 Hunter Creek Middle School Black History Month program. In the afternoon, remembrance, recognition, and celebration. The theme of this year's celebration of this year is a celebration of diversity. I am pleased to be able to introduce to you our key note speaker, the Reverend Joel Churchill. Reverend Joel, Reverend Churchill serves our community school system as a member of the Onslow County School Boards of Education. He has lived in Onslow County for 15 years and has served our community as the pastor of Sandy Run Missionary Baptist Church for the past 12 years. Reverend Churchill's personal goals are to improve the quality of life in the community, to contribute to a positive educational experience to students, and, and to inspire others though his own experiences. At this time, please join me in welcoming Reverend Churchill to Hunters Creek. Good afternoon to everyone. I've been asked to share a few thoughts on today, hopefully, in that it will emphasize the importance of education. And not only in emphasize the importance of education, but also emphasize the wonderful opportunity that is afforded to you. I hope to be able to do that just by simply sharing a story <clears throat> and perhaps re-emphasizing by way of illustration. There is a wonderful testimony that has been recorded in Crisis in the Village, Restoring Hope in African American Communities by Robert M. Franklin. The title of this particular story is The Miseducation of Papa Dallas. Papa Dallas was a young man whom uh, was a slave at a very early age. And the testimony he provides simply is that he had a desire to want to read. And that's what I really want to emphasize today, the importance of reading the importance of expanding the material of which you read. Because there was a time in when others were denied the opportunity to engage in reading. But the story is told that Papa Dallas was a young man. And every now and then he would steal away up under this tree while he was a young man on the plantation. And while he steeled away under this tree, his, his desire was to try to teach himself to read. He had the Bible in his hand, and he would sit up under this tree and, and try to learn his alphabets by looking in the Bible. But on this particular day, while he sat up under this tree, the owner of the plantation discovered what he was doing. And because it was not permittable for that population of individuals to read, the owner of the plantation decided to make an example of then little boy Dallas. So he grabbed him by the hand and he assembled all the field hands and he, he told him, he said, this is what will happen to anyone else who desires to read. Stood little Dallas by his side. 
He had a cigar in his mouth. And he removed the cigar from his mouth and he pressed it against Dallas's eyes. It scarred his eyes to where from that point on he was blind. So now we are some years years and years and years from this particular event and he's telling this story to his grandchildren because his grandchildren are now asking Papa Dallas what 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 happened to your eyes why why are your eyes scarred the way they are and Papa Dallas began to share that story with them and at the conclusion of the story he said children I need you to promise me one thing, that every opportunity that you have to pick up a book, to further your education, to expand your knowledge, to gain insight from reading, I want you to promise that you will always strive to read. So that's what I want to share with you today. That's what I hope to be able to reinforce to you today. While you're in school and during your leisure, the practice of reading is so instrumental. And as I get ready to close, let me use this particular illustration, this, this particular example to hopefully reinforce why reading is so important because what you put in your hands really matters. There was a young man who, who lived in a village. And there was an old man in that village who was very, very wise. And all the villagers would assemble around this old man and ask him a number of questions. And he always seemed to provide the right answer. He would impart knowledge to them. Well, this little boy, he left one of the, the settings and he was on his way home and he said, you know what? The next time I encounter this old wise man, I'm going to try and trick him. So he went home and he went to his room and in his room he had a, he had a bird cage. And inside the cage, he had a small bird. So he thought to himself, well, on tomorrow when I awaken and I encounter this old man, I'm going to pose a question to him. So he, he woke up early, very enthused, made his way into town and waited on the old man. And when he saw the old man coming down the street, he stood up and said, old wise man, I've got a question for you. The old wise man looked at him and said, son, what's your question? The young man displayed his bird cage. He opened it and he took out his bird. And he held the bird in his hand and he put the bird behind his back. And he said, old man, can you tell me whether or not this bird I hold in my hand is alive or dead? Now the young man is thinking to himself, if the old man says the bird is, a, is alive, then he would just squeeze it. And if the old man said the bird was dead, then he would just open up his hand and let the bird fly away. So he asked the old man the question the first time, and the old man just stood and looked at him. And then he asked the old man the question again, old man, is the bird that I hold in my hands alive or dead? The old man just stood there looking at the young man. And for the third and final time, in a more boisterous voice, the little boy said, old man, is the bird alive or dead in my hands? And the old man just stood there. 
And in a low voice, he said, young man, the answer to that question is in your hands. So I say to you today, whether or not you are successful and how successful you shall be, the answer to that question is in your hands. What you pick up and read and how you further your knowledge, the answer to that question is in your hands. The importance of expanding your knowledge and developing your mind so you can comprehend and critically analyze new thoughts, the answer to that question is in your hands. So have you, as you have come to celebrate diversity on today, whether you expand your knowledge and that you can accept other cultures and understand how people approach different things and how they think and how they arrive at their conclusions and, and be exposed to their habits and their customs, the answer to that question is in your hands. Thank you so much. I just want to thank you for taking time out of your day to come and give us that message. Um, as you were saying it, I was thinking, how many of my students did I say, it's, it's always in your hands. So I hope that you heard the message, not only for myself, but from Reverend Churchwell as well. Thank, thank you so you, much. Thank if we have a representative from the Ecclesiastes Lodge 818, would you step forward, please? Again, in appreciation for all that you've done, this group has donated to us um, financially on more than one occasion for different programs to help make Hunters Creek successful. Thank you again. A representative from Marshall Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. Again, thank you for all that you've done. They have donated not only to the school, but to individual teachers as well to help them prepare first year teachers to get their classrooms straight for all our students. So again, thank you so much. Thank you. The White Oak Youth Basketball League. Any of the students that participate in this program know that I'm pretty much here on Saturdays, but they can also tell you all the work that this league does with all the students, not only in the Hunters Creek community area, but in the White Oak District as well as the Jacksonville area. The youth league, basketball youth league, soccer, football, I don't care what it is, but our youth leagues help keep our children in school. So again, thank you for all that you've done. <laughs> this presentation is a little different from the others. At this time, I would like to ask Deputy Jacob Wills if he would join me on stage. Debbie Will joined us this year. This is the first time he's been here at Hunters Creek. And from day one, August 27th, he was out front. And I think every child who comes to the school in a car has been welcomed by this gentleman. Um, he starts their day off right with a high five, hello, it's going to be a good day, to having a backup jam in my lobby when he's giving out candy at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> Deputy Wills is retiring from law enforcement, and we wanted to take this opportunity to not only thank him for all that he's done here at Hunters Creek, but for all that he's done as a sworn officer for Onslow County. Over the past century, African American life, history, and culture have become major forces in the United States and the world. The story of Black History Month begins in Chicago during the summer of 1915 after Carter G. Woodson participated in a national celebration of the 50th anniversary of emancipation. Thousands of African Americans traveled from across the country to see exhibits highlighting the progress of their people since the abolishment of slavery. Inspired by the event, Woodson decided to form an organization to promote the scientific study of black life and history popularize knowledge about black past, and create an annual celebration. By February of 1926, 
Woodson announced Negro History Week. Woodson chose February for reasons of tradition and reform. It is commonly said that Woodson selected February to encompass the birthdays of two great Americans who played a prominent role in shaping black history, Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, whose birthdays are the 12th and 14th of February. In the 1940s, efforts began within the black community to expand the study of black history celebrations in schools and before the public. By the 1960s, Negro History Week was well on its way to becoming Black History Month. In 1976, the 50th anniversary of the first celebration and our nation's bicentennial, Negro History Week was officially expanded and redefined as Black History Month. Carter G. Woodson would smile on our nation's efforts to make black history a field of serious study and provide the public with thoughtful celebrations. This is what we do here today at Hunters Creek Middle School. Good afternoon. Um, hollow ground site, sites of African American memories. The, associate, the association, oh, okay. The Association for the Study of African American Life and History chooses a theme each year as the focus for African American History Month. The theme for 2016 is hollow ground sites of African American memories. One cannot tell the story of America without preserving and ref reflecting on the places where African Americans have made history. We have hollow ground right here in Jacksonville, North Carolina. The place is Camp Johnson and it holds a legacy of Montfort Point Marines. When Franklin D. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 8802, blacks were for the first time permitted to join the Marine Corps. Between 1942 and 1949, the camp at Mumford Point was a record depot for black recruits training 20,000 African Americans during that period. In 1948, by executive order 9981, President Harry S. Truman ordered the military to integrate. In 1974, Mumford Point was renamed Camp Gilbert H. Johnson in honor of the late Sergeant Major Gilbert H. Hashmark Johnson. Camp Johnson has since become the home of the Marine Corps Combat Service Support Schools. In 2007, a documentary entitled The Montfort Point Marine Project was released. Honoring the black Marines who trained at Montfort Point, today there is a Montfort Point Marine Museum housed on Camp Johnson that celebrates the legacy of the Montfort Point Marines. Camp Johnson is indeed hollow grounds. As you look around the gym, the artwork on display is brought to you by the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students in Miss Parrott's art classes. To speak more about the lovely pieces you see before you are Monique Morales and Rihanna Sworn. Our school art department allows us to research true events in our nation's history and allowed those events to inspire us to create something meaningful. We were allowed to pick one of the many events that revolutionized civil rights in America as the focus for our art project. Our teacher let us choose from either Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, the Montgomery bus boycott, the Greensboro sit-in, or the Lovin', Loving versus the State of Virginia Supreme Court case. Each of these milestones changed our society dramatically, eventually transforming it into the one in which we live in today. Once I read and thought about each of the events, I chose Loving versus Virginia for my art project. I chose this event because I think that it had the largest impact on the world. It inspired me because if interracial marriage was still not legal today, some of the people sitting in this gym wouldn't be here. It all started with a couple who wanted to get married, but by the state of, by the law of state Virginia, did not allow interracial marriage. Although Mildred, a black woman, and Richard, a white man, married legally in Washington, D.C., they were arrested once they returned to their hometown in Virginia. In my piece, I drew a couple getting married, showing that there was nothing holding them back from marrying the one they loved. After researching all four topics, I chose to portray the Greensboro sit-in. Initially, I was thinking of recreating the Woolworths, the Woolworths department store setting and drawing a few men sitting at the bar with angry protesters behind them. However, I looked for a deeper meaning behind just the angry messages and the racial injustice. I had to try to put myself in the place of those college students who were discouraged because of the treatment they received simply due to the color of their skin. I took my inspiration from the Greek god Atlas, 
who had to endure the burden of carrying the weight of the world, and the connection I saw to the young men and others joining them who had to endure racial slurs and hateful taunts, even though they were really no different from their aggressors. Diversity can be defined as people coming together from different races, nationalities, religions, sexes to form a community. Celebrating diversity means recognizing that people with different backgrounds, skills, attitudes, and experiences bring new and valuable ideas to the group. In school, it is very important that we welcome diversity in the classroom so that we can all grow beyond our boundaries and we learn, new, we learn something new about the people we encounter each day. Diversity can be hard for us to appreciate because it has both negative and positive effects on society. Too often, we see the aftermath of those negative effects played out in the news and over social media. An aversion to diversity amongst a group occurs due to mistrust, stereotyping, and fear. In America today, the battle against diversity wages between racial, gender, age, sexual, and religious groups. We cannot change the past, but we do not have to let it determine our future. We have to dig deep to understand the positive effects of the benefits of diversity to our society. Social diversity gives us the chance to enjoy experiences outside of what we are normally accustomed to doing. As the Reverend Jesse Jackson said, our flag is red, white, and blue, but our nation is a rainbow, red, yellow, brown, black, and white. America is like a blanket, but more like a quilt. Many patches, many pieces, many colors, many sizes, all woven together by a common thread. So let us not dwell on the hate and the fear. Let us not allow the animosity towards a particular group to prevent us from seeing the beauty of its individuals. Instead, let us use the mistakes of, our, of the past and the present to pave a new road towards a better future, one that is more welcoming, understanding, and accepting of one's differences, one that truly allows us to celebrate the diversity in each and every one of us. Thank you. Humanity, for this is the way the world goes, a speech we all hate to hear, lies speaking in their ears. Will we ever be the same? We are not evil, I can promise you that. We are simply human. Please, my God, show this fact. This world is rotten, it's no longer great. For they have punished us, claiming this is our fate. But how can this be, when we hurt not even a single fly? Yet in their eyes, destruction lies. Please, God, help us here, for we want closure in this mighty fight. All we want is humankind, to come together as one whole, so we can finally see our souls. We can bond together and do what's right to leave this horrid road and find mankind. The slaves have spoken after their hearts were broken. The tears watered from those who cried while being hurt or murdered. As we look back on the years that must not be forgotten, this month gives us a chance at redemption for those who spent their days picking cotton. Our world today is falling in reverse which shouldn't be a sign of the devil's curse. The present time is right for us to stand up and fight. There is a time and day for us to unite as a country and pray. Kids walk home in the state of adversity because we still don't know the true meaning of diversity. Martin Luther King Jr. fought for what was right, freedom for us to go to the same schools, to have equality and have equal civil rights. We have suffered enough. The days of the past have been rough. So our next journey begins to become a stronger country, better than it was back then. One of the most important people in the history of the United States is Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman changed the lives of hundreds of slaves and made a huge impact on our history. America would not have been the same without Harriet Tubman and the role she played in the Underground Railroad. Although Harriet's life began, began as a slave, she did not let those chains hold her in bondage. She escaped the field to the north, but due to her kind-heartedness and her passion for freedom, she risked her life by returning to the south again and again in order to help other slaves find the path to freedom. I know what the cage bird feels, alas, when the sun is bright on the upland slopes, when the wind stirs soft 
through the springing grass, and the river flows like a stream of glass. When the first bird sings and the first bud oops, and the faint perfume of the chalice steals, I know what the cage bird feels. I know why the cage bird beats his wings till the blood is red on the cruel bars, for he must fly back to his perch and claim when he fain would be on the bow swing. And the pain still throbs in the old, old scars, and they pulse again with the keener sting. I know why he beats his wing. I know why the cage bird sings on me when his wing is bruised and his bosom sore, when he beats his bars and he would be free. It is not a carol of joy or glee, but a prayer that he sends from his heart's deep core, but a plea that upward he, to heaven he flings. I know why the cage bird sings. Well, son, I tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stair. It had tacks in it and splinters and boards torn up and places with no carpet on the floor bare. But all the time, I's been a climbing on and reaching landings and turning corners. And sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So boy, don't you turn your back. Don't you sit down on the stairs. Cause, cause you find it's kind of hard. Don't you fall now for I's still going, honey. I's still climbing and, li and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. You may write me down in history with your bitter and twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk around like I got all oils pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns, in certainty of tides and hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head, lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops begin by my soulful cries. Does my haughtiness upset you? Don't you take it awful hard? Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut, cut me with your eyes. You may, you may kill me with your hatefulness, but still like arrow rise. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear. I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. And so I plead with you this afternoon as we go ahead, remain committed to nonviolence. Our aim must never be to defeat or humiliate the white man, but to win his friendship and understanding. We must come to see that the end we seek is a society at peace with itself, a society that can live with its conscience. And that will be a day, not of white man, not of black man. That will be a day of man as man. I know you are asking today, how long will it take? Somebody's asking, how long will prejudice blind the visions of men, darken their understanding, and drive bright-eyed wisdom from her sacred throne? Somebody's asking, when will wounded justice lying frustrating on the streets of Selma and Birmingham and continue at communities all over the South be lifted from this dust of shame to reign supreme among the children of men. Somebody's asking, when will the radiant star of hope be plunged against the nocturnal bosom of this lonely night, plucked from the weary souls with chains of fear and manacles of death? How long will be justice crucified and truth bear it? I come to say to you this afternoon, however difficult the moment, However frustrating the hour, it will not be long, because truth crushed to earth will rise again. One day, when the glory comes, it'll be ours, it'll be ours. Oh, one day, when the wall is won, we will be sure.
greater readiness. Let us stand with the greater determination and let us move on in these powerful days, these days of challenge to make America what it ought to be. We have an opportunity to make America a better nation. Well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop and I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will, and he's allowed me to go up to the mountain, and I've looked over, and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want, to, I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land, and I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing any man. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. When we allow freedom to ring, when we let it ring from every city and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, great God Almighty, free at, we are free at last. can live forever. How long? Not long, because you shall reap what you sow. How long? Not long. Truth forever on the scaffold, wrong forever on the throne. Yet the scaffold sways the future, and behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. How long? Not long, because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bend towards justice. How long? Not long, because mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. His truth is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the heart of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Be an outcast, take the contradictions of your life and wrap around you like shawl to parry stones to keep warm. Watch the people, watch the people succumb to madness with able cheer. Let them look ask it at you and you ask it reply. Be an outcast. Be pleased to walk alone, uncool, or align the crowded riverbeds with other impetuous fools. Make a merry gathering on the bank where thousands perish, for brave words, brave hurt words, they say. Just keep listening, and pretty soon you'll show your 
Segregation is defined as the action or state of setting someone or something apart from other people. Who decided segregation could be based on race or gender? Who decided people could be separated because of their sexual orientation or the amount of money they have? We have, as a community, community done this. We have separated ourselves and we need to be the ones to end it. What we need is diversity. It shouldn't matter if you're gay, female, black, Asian, transgender, male, white, Hispanic, or lesbian. It doesn't matter, and it never really has. We must accept each other in order to accept ourselves and grow as a community. We as people share so many similarities, so why let social standards or the color of our skin get between us? As someone once said, diversity is the one true thing we all have in common. Celebrate it every day. In our 240 years as Americans, we have been able to overcome past challenges by pulling together for the greater good. In the past few years, we have seen a new outbreak of racial strife in this country, but these tragedies serve as reminders that we need to band together as we need to overcome. Moving forward, we as people need to change. We need to stop judging others because of the way they look, the way they talk, and by things they can't change like disabilities. People should not be defined by their physical properties like what they wear, but by who they are and what they do. So just be nice to people and make the school a better place. It may sound cliche, but treat others the way that you want to be treated. Thank you. But I know, somehow, that only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. For this is what Martin said, dark enough to see the stars. This was part of his I've been to the mountaintop speech he gave before his assassination in 1968. He led us through this fight, but yet I can't stop thinking of what he meant. What did he mean? What did he see? the stars in the dark. Maybe he meant for these dark times there will be something shining bright. Maybe he meant for dark times there will be light. Or maybe he meant there is hope. He believed in something great and something big. Was it possible he knew the outcome of this? For he was right and now we stand in unity. Together as equals, we made it far. Martin, did he know this all along? Maybe Martin really did see the star in the dark. The star, the star that led him through and marches on to victory. As I look up at the sky, I no longer see just stars. I see hope in the sky. I believe Martin did see the star, the star that will be forever in someone's life. Maybe there's a star in everyone's life. Martin Luther King Jr., the man who saw the star of hope. We say your faithful name and wonder how such a brilliant man could be gone right now. As now, I look up to a sky full of stars I can understand now. It really is only when it is dark enough can you see the stars, and our stars are shining brightly. to her 
Yeah. 